Uh, let's talk about transformations, transformations of uh, graphs such as um, f of x equals x to the second quadratic, f of x equals x cubed, uh, cubic, let's say f of x equals square root of x, f of x equals two to the power of x, an exponential function, and on and on. The pr principle of transformations work uh, is the same for all of them. So let's start with something that we will see the most, which is a quadratic function. So notice that uh, the graph of f of x equals x squared is parabola like this. And so we can, uh, we can have functions that shift this graph you know, to the right, to the left, up, down. Uh, so let's say you can have a graph right here, you can have one right here, you can have it reflected about the x uh, axis and, uh, and on and on. So let me, so this was x and this one was y. The first part of the transformation that I want to tell you is that uh, the horizontal shift, which is the hardest for most students, but not for too long. So let's talk about the horizontal shift. So consider y equals um, x to the second, the parent function of uh, in quadratic, the easiest one, y equals it y equals x to the second versus uh, y equals, say, x minus one to the second power. So most students they think they look at this and their intuition tells them that these are the same graph except the second one, the blue one must be shifted to the left one unit, but not so. And then they graph it in their calculator or uh, uh, on the paper and they notice that actually the graph shifted to the right one unit. And how could that be explained? Here's one way that I think uh, you can explain it, you can convince yourself. And so let me just go ahead and show you some tables of values. So suppose if I have here uh, X and uh, Y in here and then x and y in here. And let me just put some values for x, let's say uh, uh, negative two, negative one, uh, zero, one, and two. And that results into four, one, zero, one, four. And for the blue one, if I say again, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, let's do one more for the sake of discussion. The output is going to be a nine, a four, a one, a zero, a one, and a four. Okay. So here's what I propose to you. For like, the easiest would be to look at the vertex of the uh, first function, y equals x squared. When your input is zero, your output is zero. But for the blue one, if you want the same output of zero, notice you must have input of positive one, which is one unit to the right. In other words, you need to compensate for that shift by how much? By one unit. Okay, uh, let's look at some other values. Notice that here negative two goes to four in the first graph, uh, first table. So if I want the output of four on the um, blue one, you see, notice that my input moved from negative two to negative one. So it shifted one unit to the right. Same thing for here and here. So notice to get the same output, in this case, one, the input of zero versus the input of negative one, which is one unit shifted to the right. So I do invite you that if you don't see it, try to just spend some time with it and hopefully you'll get to understand it better. Um, although 
I'm, I'm sure um, with time, it'll come to you. Okay, so we talked about horizontal shift. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is um, vertical shift, vertical shift. So suppose if you have y equals x to the second plus let's say three. So this one is easy for everybody to see. So, cause they know that whatever the value of x squared is, you know, you are adding three units to the output. So it is gonna be three units shifted up. So the parent function, the parent function is still x squared and it's gonna be three units up. So I never had any student that had a problem with vertical shift. But how about, you know, let's, let's talk about, uh, I'm sure you've seen some graph that are um, stretched vertically, so they're kind of skinny going up really fast. Or you've seen some graph that, you know, they're kind of open. So, you know, they, the, the Y values increase, you know, uh, in a slower manner. So let me go to the next page and talk about uh, uh, compression or stretch. Suppose if you have some y or f of x equals some number a times uh, f of x, uh, let's, you know, and of course a cannot be zero because that's the trivial case. So example would be um, y equals two times x to the second. Okay, so what happens here, notice that the value of x squared is now getting multiplied by two, so y is increasing faster. So this value makes, you know, makes your graph goes higher or stretch vertically in a faster manner. The larger the number, the faster it increases. Now the question is, Hey, wait a minute, what if I had a fraction? What if, you know, what if my A was greater than zero, but it was smaller than one? So example, Y equals, let's say one half of X to the second. And so if your A, or if the coefficient of your X squared is between greater than zero, but smaller than one is a fraction. So we know that, you know, if you multiply any number by any fraction, you just get smaller, you know, number because one half of X squared is half times as much as X squared. So uh, this, the value of A, so let me put here that if A is between zero and one, then your graph gets get compressed, compressed. But if your A is greater than one, it's stretch. I don't think that's, you know, that's, a, a, that's not that hard to see. All you have to do is just like, you know, uh, go to your graphing calculator and try it for yourself. And it also makes sense that if you go to the next page, that if I have y equals, or let me just use f of x. If you have f of x equals x to the second versus f of x equals seven x to the second. Well, here the value of y gets multiplied by seven. So all of a sudden the height of your graph is seven times as much. So it's stretch. But if you had f of x equals x to the second versus f of x equals one over seven x to the second, you know? Now notice that here, the value of x squared gets multiplied by one over seven, which is the same as dividing by seven. So all of a sudden the height of your graph drops down. So it is a compress. Um, and I should say vertical compression, vertical compression 
And for up here, I should say vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. Not shift, stretch. Please make that distinction. All right. A um, couple of more things to add is reflection about the x axis. Can we have graphs that are like, you know, instead of being going up, now they're going up, you know, down. So instead of being like say, up here, now they are down here. Sure. So it happens when you have f of x equals the opposite of your function minus, or I should let me be more mathematically correct and say y or the height of your graph equals the opposite of some f of x. So now you have reflection, reflection about x axis. Okay. Um, what if I want to have, or oh, you know, can we have reflection about the y-axis? Sure, that's the, so if you have some y equals f of minus x, so now the negative is attached to your x, um, then you have reflection, reflection about y-axis. So now, at this point, it begs the question or the natural question to ask is what if there were more numbers floating around? So if I had some f of x equals a times x plus say b to the say second power plus some uh, c. Okay, I know that this is uh, my horizontal shift b units to the left. So you know that if a is greater than one, you have a vertical stretch. And if a is between zero and one, you have uh, a vertical compression. So stretch or compression. And then the c is your vertical shift, not stretch, shift, vertical shift. Okay. So let's say if C is five, now your graph moves up five units. If C is negative 10, now your graph moves down 10 units. All right. So the natural question is that what if I have, you know, more numbers floating around here, you know, that let's say that if you had f of x equals, let's say, some a times bx plus c to the second plus some number d. And you say that, how about this number? Okay. Does that make any difference on the graph? And the answer is yes. How do I deal with that? Oh, first of all, it's 21st century. So most of the time you're gonna be uh, graphing this on the calculator, but so to understand it, the way, the proper way of dealing with that, or maybe I should say the easiest way of dealing with that is to uh, factor the B out. So factor the B out. Some teachers call that truncate, truncate your uh, function. Okay, let me give you an example. Let me make up an example that way you know what do I mean. Uh, suppose we have uh, f of x equals five times one half of x, let's say plus two to the second power plus seven. Okay, we know uh, that this, the parent function is uh, x squared. Uh, I know that this seven is my uh, vertical shift, but this one half, since this one half is getting multiplied by uh, five and this two is here, you know, it's gonna make a difference, you know, so in, in other words, how does that one half affects my graph? And what do I need to do? Here's what you need to do. You need to truncate your uh, function. 
So let me rewrite this as f of x equals five untouched. I'm gonna go ahead and first uh, factor, I'm gonna go ahead and first factor the one half out. So this becomes x plus four. And notice that one half times x is one half x. Yes, I had it. And one half times four is two. Yes, I had it. So I didn't change anything. I simply factored the one half out. Now using the laws of exponent, I know that this two pertains to one half and to this parenthesis. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that as f of x equals five times one half to the second power times x plus four to the second power plus a seven out here. Okay, next step, I'm gonna simplify f of x equals five times, one half squared is one fourth, x plus four to the second power, and here's plus seven. Now I can go ahead and multiply this five by one fourth. One last step, I'm gonna have f of x equals five over four times x plus four to the second power plus seven. And notice that now I don't have any extra numbers that's gonna you know, uh, bother me. So let me just erase the first step. That way I can write things down. Uh, let's say that we were to identify uh, the parent function, the horizontal shift, vertical shift, and on and on. So uh, parent function is x to the second. Okay. Uh, the uh, horizontal horizontal shift is going to be four units to the left, okay. Um, vertical stretch is going to be a factor of five over four, of of five over four. And notice that five over four is greater than one. So it's not, you know, it's, it's not shrinking your graph. Five over four is one and one fourth. So it's greater than one. And finally, uh, last step is going to be the vertical shift of seven. So vertical shift of seven. Okay, email me if you have any questions.